Hey, Chris Clark with the Georgia Chamber. Thank you for continuing to join us throughout today with our updates from some of our state leaders. I'm joined now by Dennis Chastain, President and CEO of Georgia EMC, to give us an update on the power recovery in the areas that they serve. Dennis, thank you for being with us. Thank you for what you guys have been doing since I know before the storm. Uh, before we jump into it, maybe help people understand how the EMCs are structured and the service areas that you guys provide statewide. Okay, well, first of all, Chris, thank you for the opportunity to be with you and, and talk about the storm and its impact on the EMCs and, and give an update on our restoration efforts. So there are 41 EMCs that distribute power across the state of Georgia. We are literally in 157 of 159 counties, uh, have the largest distribution network in the state of Georgia. Um, we literally uh, serve about 73% of the land area uh, of the state. So uh, our service area is very, very broad, uh, also very, very rural. Uh, you know, we also serve the suburbs around Atlanta and the other cities, but the majority of our service area is in rural Georgia. Which we've seen this, this swath of damage literally from the Florida line all the way up through Augusta and in North Georgia. Tell me about what your guys, and I know you have EMCs in every corner of the state, all independent, all working together though. Where have you seen the most damage? Where have you heard the, the worst impact from your service area? Okay. For us, uh, you know, the storm obviously came in the state uh, around the Valdosta area, generally speaking, uh, came in and then kind of went up the, the eastern side of the state. So that's where the majority of our damage is. It's in South Central and East Georgia. Uh, and the damage is significant, uh, very significant. Um, I have uh, been with the co-ops 38 years and it is the worst storm I have ever seen. Uh, I've got people who've been longer than me that say it's the worst storm they've ever seen. So certainly worst storms in decade, if not the worst storm in the 87 year history of the co-ops. Uh, in the state of Georgia. So, uh, you know, it, it really affected probably every one of those 41 co-ops a little bit, but there are 11 that again are in that east central, uh, uh, south central up through eastern Georgia that are significantly damaged, uh, you know, catastrophic damage, I would describe it. Uh, it's really hard to describe in words what the damage looks like. And we're talking about thousands and thousands of trees on the line, thousands of broken power poles, uh, hundreds of miles of line that's on the ground. Uh, so it, it flooding, uh, it, you name it, it's kind of mother nature at her, her worst in those areas. So kind of give you a little bit of, of kind of picture of where we are on it. So at the, at the peak of the storm, right after the storm passed through, we had 435,000 EMC customers that were out of power. Uh, this morning, we're down to 168,000. Uh, who are still without power. So, you know, that's significant progress, but unfortunately we still got a long way to go uh, to get everyone's power back on. Um, so, you know, those 11 EMCs that are out there, as I mentioned, you know, what they're dealing with is just broken poles everywhere, trees that are in their way that have to be cut out of the way, roads that are impassable. Uh, and then you get in some of the areas we serve that are so rural, uh, you can't even get trucks in there right now to, to you know, have help with replacing the poles and those kind of things. The ground's too soft. The truck literally would get marred up. They're having to use specialized equipment. And unfortunately, in many cases, they're having to go back to the old-fashioned ways of men literally carrying poles in, digging holes by hand, setting holes by hand, uh, climbing the poles to put conductor back up. So it's it's a pretty pretty major uh, effort that uh, is going on. But good news is we've got a, a basically an army of personnel who are out there uh, working on this. One of the great things about the this industry, not just the electric cooperative industry, but the entire power industry is we all have mutual aid agreements. And within the cooperative family, uh, we bring in crews from all over the country. So right now uh, we've got linemen who are in here from 12 different states. Uh, as far away as Nebraska, Texas, Oklahoma, and as far north as Pennsylvania, uh, Indiana, and Illinois. And we've got more on the way. So uh, we have literally doubled the workforce uh, that's out there working in these EMCs uh, over the last uh, five days. Uh, so um, it, there's a, there, like I said, there's a lot of people out there. Uh, and then we also, in addition to the personnel coming in from out of state, 
as EMCs on the western side of the state, northern side of the state, as they got their outages done, they're also sending crews down to help their fellow co-ops that are that are damaged. And we also have contractor personnel uh, in doing that as well. So again, a lot of people, a lot of support personnel out there working. And you know, one of the interesting things that uh, is you can imagine the logistics of trying to house and feed and uh, all those those men. And so what we have done is their EMCs have set up six base camps across the heavily damaged areas. Uh, those base camps literally, a uh, company brings in trailers and tents that does everything from provide sleeping quarters to uh, food service to laundry service uh, for the men so that they've got a place to come in and and rest and eat uh, in between their shifts. Uh, so that's a, a pretty amazing thing um, that goes on as well. So, so I also want to mention that in addition to distribution damage, uh, which is what you as a, as a consumer get from the EMC, uh, this was also a significant transmission damage event. So transmission is the high voltage lines that bring the power from the power plant uh, to the EMC's distribution points. And so that's been significant as well. Uh, one of the most significant outages that Georgia Transmission Corporation has had, they're our sister company that provides transmission service to the EMC. So uh, little statistics for them. Uh, they've made tre tremendous progress as well as of this morning. They've returned service to 20 of the 117 transmission lines serving EMCs that were damaged. And they've also... Uh, re-energized all but 26 of the 200 substations that were out. So they're making sub, uh, substantial project progress as well. So it's really been a, uh, a dual effort, both on the distribution side and on the transmission side. And Dennis, help us understand how you prioritize. I mean, you've got, you know, normally we have a storm, it hits a small area, all the resources right. come in and we can focus. But here, I mean, it's literally the entire length of the state and the breadth of half of it. You've got folks that, you know, maybe one or two homes down a long road far from town. They're hard to reach, hard to get to. You've got municipalities that have higher density right now. You've got the suburbs around Augusta and Columbia County. So how do you, that's such a difficult decision. How do you prioritize? Well, the best way to describe it is, you know, EMCs uh, will start from the substation from the okay. delivery point out, and they will try to get the main lines back up, the three phase lines that carry the the high volt, the higher voltage out before it's gone into taps distributed out. So they'll be working on those first. They'll literally put a crew at the substation. They'll follow that line out, rebuild it, whatever it may, may need to be done. Same token, they'll have people out working on the taps. One thing that may be frustrating uh, and people don't understand is they may see a crew that comes down their road and repairs the line in front of their house, but yet they don't have any power. The reason is because that main line may still be damaged or that substation may be out. So uh, so it, it's a, a coordinated effort, but they do really have to start with the getting the biggest pieces of the system back on first, and then unfortunately go down to the individual people. And, and for us, that is very true. It, it can be very frustrating if you live you know, off the beaten path say a couple of miles down the road where, you know, you're at the very end of a line. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it may take a while to get to you. And that's the other part with our restoration. Sometimes I think people misunderstand with the co-ops. They'll, they'll see numbers drop significantly for Georgia Power, uh, who when they get a line restored, they may restore, you know, 50 people at a time. We can actually have lines restored that get one or two people on because our density is so low out there in rural Georgia. Dennis, I, 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 this is probably not a fair question, but I want to ask it because I know people are going to ask. You know, my folks were told, hey, this might take two weeks, and it took six days, right? We've had other yeah. folks in the state that are saying, hey, I'm hearing it might be a month from now before I get power. What's a realistic expectation for folks that have severe damage and that are in very rural communities? Are we talking days, weeks, or, or could it really be months at this point? I think weeks is probably a fair thing. Uh, I think you will see significant outages repaired this week, as we've already seen going into next week. But truth of the matter is this uh, devastation is so bad, there's going to be people who are going to go weak. So what we would encourage folks is, you know, be prepared. And it is hard to give an estimated time for restoration and accurate, uh, you know, uh, estimation for some people. So what we would tell people is if you are, are 
experience an outage now, you do have heavy destruction around your house, be prepared. This may take, you know, in the next week or weeks after that to get done. So you may want to make alternative arrangements, especially if you have medical issues where you need electricity is, you know, if you can find some place to relocate, uh, if you can get someone a generator to help power, you know, your medical equipment, your necessities, or reach out to a health facility if, if you're in that situation. Yeah, that's that's great advice and, and, and appreciate that perspective for folks. It's just, it's the unknowing a lot of times, but I, I do yeah. think it's fair to say to everyone out there, we know your power's out. Oh, absolutely. We know, we know where the power is out. We know where the problems are and the crews are working. And as one area is cleared up, you move those folks to another. The other thing I thought, two things I think that were kind of interesting to me to see is the crews go through and they're in their backyard, but they're just there to cut the trees to make right. way for the next group of guys that are coming through, right? Like it, it is a well choreographed effort that the tree guys go in, then those linemen go in the same time you're doing this other work. Yeah, that's very true. The vegetation management crews have to go in first, uh, oftentimes, because there are places where the tree is tangled in with the wires and those kind of things. So they have to go in and cut all that loose. Uh, oftentimes, they have to cut our our wire uh, in order to get the tree removed. And then they have to go back and obviously rebuild the wire as well. So it is well orchestrated. But, you know, what I would tell people, don't you know, it's easy not to get discouraged. Look, hey, we all get it. We want to get your power on as fast as you want your power back on. And we certainly feel for you. And, you know, a lot of our linemen uh, who are out there working, you know, their homes don't have power either. So their their families are at home, but they're out there working and, and they are working night and day uh, to get the stuff done. And they want to get it done as, as quick as possible. So, you know, it, it's not never convenient when you're out of power. None of us like that. Uh, and we wish we had you know, better news to tell you in some cases, but uh, I think it's better for us to be truthful and give you the reality of the situation than give you give you false information. Well, and so many people out there don't have news. They can't see TV. They don't know what's happening. They don't know the extent. They think it's just me and my community. I talked to someone yesterday that had no idea what was happening in North Carolina, right? That, just right. The, the utter devastation. So it's part of what we're doing here and getting this information out. We'll continue to get that information out. But Dennis, we appreciate you, all of our utility companies, what you guys are doing, every EMC out there. Uh, I'll give you last word here. Any advice uh, or ways for folks to maybe even help at those base camps? Anything that you would suggest or recommend? Well, here, here would be the main thing. You know, I would say if you see our linemen, whether they're from here or they're from Nebraska, there's a lineman out there working on your line, you know, uh, certainly don't interfere with their work, but they appreciate a thank you. Uh, they appreciate a, a kind get gesture like a bottle of water or a cookie. Uh, all that means a lot. It lifts their spirits uh, to be, to know that they're appreciated out there. And, you know, the other I would say is ask for patience. And I know that's a very difficult thing to ask for, to ask for patience, but here's what I would say, you know, um, back to those folks in North Carolina, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in touch with, you know, my counterparts in the other states and, you know, my heart goes out. There are a lot of people who've lost their lives uh, in this, this storm. I mean, it's one thing we have, none of us want to lose our property and those kind of things, but there's a lot of people hurting out there. So, you know, just ask everyone for their continued thoughts and prayers for those people and thoughts and prayers for everyone, your neighbors who, who are still suffering, you know, think about them and pray for them. Amen. Well, Dennis, thanks for taking the time today. I know you're busy. I know you're heading out uh, into the field uh, and we appreciate you. Tell your guys how much we appreciate them. And we'll continue to give EMC updates, Oglethorpe power updates, transmission updates on our social media as we move through the next few weeks here. And we'll be back in touch. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.